Okay, so let's uh, let's start. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is the uh, mentoring effect talk, measuring uh, the effectiveness of OSS uh, open source um, mentoring uh, programs. I'm not actually sure what that second S. Open source so software. Software. You'd think you'd think I'd seen you'd, I've seen these uh, slides before. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, hello everyone. Um, uh, my name is Nate uh, Waddington. I am a developer advocate at uh, the CNCF. Uh, there I wear uh, two hats, one as a technical writer uh, and the other I help um, uh, run the mentoring programs and it's, it's very much help. I do nothing, uh, nothing alone and one of the people uh, who helped me here to my uh, left is uh, Diane. I'll let you introduce yourself. All right, and I'm um, with Viturgia. I'm the Director of Research and Advisory Services for them. I'm also the mentoring tech lead for the mentoring working group underneath the contributor strategy group um, in the CNCF and um, I'm here yeah, and we'll, uh, we'll explain what that is in a, 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 a <laughs> and to my right here is uh, Ben I'll let him introduce himself Hi everyone, I'm ben. Oh, you need, I think you need the mic otherwise we're gonna pass this back and forth yeah all right so I'm Ben and I'm a community education manager at automatic um, and I'm a full-time um, co sponsored contributor to the WordPress project and for 23 2023 and 2024 I am the training team representative within the WordPress project um, so I never help the team navigate towards the bigger project goals um, and I lead some of the guide programs within that team all right um, and so just a little bit of uh, history on the uh, mentoring uh, working group here. Um, I was, uh, I, I, I came on uh, to the CNCF probably about 2021, I think, uh, and had initially started only as a technical writer. Uh, and at some point uh, I was working with uh, Ehor, uh, who was running the mentoring program, and he wanted to move on to, to, to do some other things. And so he said, hey, would you like to, to, to work with me on uh, developing this mentoring program and, and, and handing it off? And so uh, I had one, I call it a term, under my belt with him. Uh, and then unfortunately he had to, uh, he lives in the, the Ukraine, and so he had to step away uh, and defend his country. So at which point I had a very large pair of shoes to fill. Uh, Ihor is one of those incredibly capable uh, folks who I don't know how he has the time to do all of the things that he did. It was amazing. Uh, and so I'm looking around going, okay, I've never run a mentoring program before by myself um, and had only just like three months of uh, experience with him. So I was looking around uh, for ways to um, do this and I thought you know what this is open source let's build out a program that is by the community for the community and I was looking around at our various uh, uh, um, parts of the CNCF and we had the tag contributor strategy uh, group tag is a, a, a technical advisory group we have several of them and several of the folks here in this room I can see is so so there's again it's not just me it's everybody here um, and so we were able to build out a mentoring working group uh, under that to help try and collect folks to try and build out um, a way of doing this. And so one of the things that we, we set as goals for this group was to uh, not only um, have folks run through our mentoring program, but to increase uh, project, uh, CNCF project participation, um, uh, not just in the, the LFX, but also in some of these other um, uh, areas as well. We, we support not only our own internal LFX uh, program, we also uh, help our projects write proposals for outreachy, uh, write proposals for uh, Google season of, uh, season of code, summer of code. <laughs> I always get them always mixed up. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, and we, of course, have our, uh, have our own internal one, which uh, we, 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 we run as well. Um, we want to increase the number of CNCF projects and the number of mentees participating. When I first started, I think we had uh, about 80 people a year going through and we're now at about 150 um, and we're looking towards uh, probably 160 uh, this year on pace for. Uh, we want to increase the quality of the mentorship that we're doing. Uh, we want to, 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 to programmatize and sort of recognize what we're doing and see how we can improve things in a systematic way. Um, we want to explore opportunities for the CNCF to participate in other mentoring programs. We haven't been as good at that yet. Um, we're still kind of at the three that we, we started with. So if you know of other programs, let me know. I'll be around. Um, we wanted to increase the uh, diversity of participants 
not just mentees, but also mentors. Um, uh, this is one of the pr reasons I really uh, like supporting the outreachy program is uh, we are able to um, bring folks in who potentially wouldn't be included in other um, programs. So it's, it's a really good, um, really good program. I highly recommend the outreachy one. Uh, and of course, we wanted to increase, uh, we wanted to develop mentorship. We wanted to train the mentors. We wanted to make the mentoring better. Um, so this is all a uh, long walk for a ham sandwich to try and discuss how we got to, to, to Diane being a part of it. So I was running monthly meetings and uh, sort of inviting people to come along. And every, every month I would have uh, spreadsheets and I'd say, oh, we have this many things happening. We've got this many mentors. We've got this many CNCF projects uh, participating, but it was all really rudimentary and it was all very, very manual. And so Diane came in uh, with some of her uh, 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 tooling with Patricia and uh, uh, whatnot, and uh, was saying, "Well, we can we can actually sort of uh, get a little bit more granular here." And so, uh, while I had maybe an intuition of some of the numbers, she was able to come in and really sort of say, "Hey, well, let's let's try and um, see how." Uh, people are engaging in these projects, see how we can figure out better outreach and uh, the status of uh, things like current and past students and all that sort of stuff. And I'm talking too long here because we, we wanted to keep this short. So I'm going to let, okay. so I'm gonna let uh, Diane continue from this point. Okay, we'll see. Um, let's see if I can, if, can I make these a little bit bigger? Yes, I can, can I? So I can see this. So, um, yeah, so I'm... So I, I'm deeply indebted to everybody else that's in the room that's part of the contributor strategy team the, uh, and all of the folks who've worked on the contributor um, ladders and all of that stuff, as well as all the background that Ihor and um, you have done over the past years getting this up to speed. And so what we're going to look at today is um, a couple of mentoring working cases, and I'm going to talk a little quickly. Um, hopefully so we can get into the conversation with the rest of you about um, these two use cases. And so um, we have, luckily, the Linux Foundation CNCF mentoring cohorts that we're going to dive into, and I'll walk through that to show you the, um, the way that we do this, create these dashboards for tracking and, and encouraging engagement um, in these projects. And then we're going to have um, you step up and take a, a walk through how we're doing it the same, basically the same generic practices and best practices for, for, for watching these projects and the mentors that, that are, and the mentees that are participating in over at WordPress. So just to set the table. So there's two, two words, two use cases that we're going to walk through. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the research methodology here. So how many of you in the room have seen or heard or used Batergia sometime in your prox? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, we appreciate that. And if you haven't um, seen it, the, the open source version of it, Grimoire Lab, is hosted in the um, Chaos Project. So it is an open source project under the hood. And these are just um, very nice tools to use uh, to understand the engagement and activity in GitHub. Um, as it also pulls in data from other sources as we need them. But in this case, we're just doing GitHub data. So. We've talked about that with the WordPress people. There are other things that we'd like to pull into. Um, so really what we're trying to do is some qualitative work. So the Linux Foundation does tons of wonderful surveys and pulls out, teases out that information um, so that the observable stuff and sort of this mixed approach allows us to balance data metrics with actual opinions and feedback mechanisms. And that's been really helpful, too. I think you've had a couple of good surveys, too. Uh, yeah, we had, um, I can't remember the name, the title of it now, but the, uh, the research, uh, I believe it's research at uh, LinuxFoundation.org has, um, uh, I think every couple of months, we'll have a, a new white paper out. So uh, the one that was referring to here is about a year old now. Yeah, yeah. So I'm on the quantitative side. I am a data geek. Um, and I really took a, a look at what he was doing with his spreadsheets, and so I kind of sighed deeply and said, oh, it's not a repeatable process. So what we wanted to try and do is create, and I love everybody this week is using the word cohorts, but create cohorts um, so that we could analyze each of the mentoring working groups, uh, me mentor mentoring cohorts for the different periods on the different projects, and then drill down on how engaged they were and find out anything we could, any insights we could, to help guide 
and scale Nate, who had now a very growing community of people working in a very growing gr group of um, projects under the CNCF. And so that's really kind of what we're, we're trying to key in on. So we created these dashboards um, for some of the, the cohorts based on grouping the GitHub IDs and the names um, in, in the back end, and you can talk to me later or Georg later about how we do this with, um, with Vitergia, but it's a pretty simple UI to do this and create a filter for the people who are part of the fall, this, in this instance, um, the fall there, and look at, um, the interesting thing is to look at people not just in the context of um, the actual working group or the mentoring period, but also where, where were they before, where are they during it, and where were they after it. And that's one of the nice things about Petergia is it lets you look over that historical period and talk a little bit about that. And so you can do all this and you get this out of the box kind of nice experience um, to pull all that through. Um, it also allows us to pull from GitHub the affiliation, so what um, organization they with, they're with. It, it does retain anonymity for people who are not um, using their name or their affiliation. I've got a few GitHub IDs that I don't share with the universe. But um, it is, and it, there's a back engine to Bitergia that allows us to do some identity management. And the key to that piece is that the affiliations are at the time of the contribution. So, um, so if I, coming from Red Hat during the 10 years I was at Red Hat, anything I contributed to open source gets flagged at this. And now that I'm at Bitergia, it gets flagged as a contribution by someone from Bitergia. So that becomes really important and you'll see how that works out here. Um, and this is an, an, ex an example of that. So some of the stuff that we're working on is really trying to figure out um, retention in projects and retention within in the CNCF case, member organizations, and how people move from being a mentee to maybe being employed by one of the member organizations or that, that kind of information. So we now, rather than the spreadsheet approach, which was kind of static and um, not repeatable, we had this ability to um, track the groups by the filtered mentoring cohorts. <coughs> this is where they need to have water. And I'm trying to talk as fast as I can here. and so. The other thing that allowed us to do is see how connected um, the projects that they were working on and the, the members of those cohorts were to other projects. And this, this is, becomes very interesting because in the case of something like um, the project Metchery, which it had a very successful group of folks and a very successful mentor and sponsor for the, their mentoring projects, you could see them how they are connected to the repos, to the other projects, um, and how you they how Meshery and the company behind them, Layer Five, mm -hmm. um, kind of leveraged in a very good way, not in a negative way, the mentoring project to grow people um, for their project and retain them. So it's really very interesting to see where people are playing and how connected they are to each of these. And so if you don't know Meshery, it's one of the, the CNCF projects um, and it's backed by a very nice um, group of people um, at Layer 5 and um, Lee Calcott. Lee is one of our most prolific mentors. I think yeah. he's probably mentored more people than, than, anybody. Uh, than anybody in, our, in the whole history of yeah. our program. <laughs> so we like to call him out and thank him. So Lee, if you're watching this later, thank you. Um, and he's a really good example. And one of the reasons we're teasing out this example and this pattern is because we're trying to encourage the other. How many are there CNCF projects There's, now? As of last count, um, and I think we welcomed six new sandbox last uh, week. Last, no, this week. Uh, so we're at, I believe, 190 projects right. in the CNCF. Yeah. So we want, we would love all of them to take advantage of the mentoring um, offerings that we have um, and be part of this. So we're trying to show them the benefits of it, and I think that's what this kind of um, research does. Um, and enables us to do. So um, some of the, the findings we found, we, we discovered, um, there were a lot of things. So this connectedness piece helped them create um, connections to other projects that were semi-related to the um, Meshery one. So they weren't necessarily just con contributing to Meshery, and I'm not sure how large, it, on this screen it's very tiny, and I can't read it, even if I had a microscope. But um, there are a lot of projects, and so this kind of lets us go into the this bigger so I can see. Um, 
some of the, the other pieces of the projects that they're working on and where they're, where, it, where they're landing. And you can, because he, he does like spreadsheets, you can download all of this into a spreadsheet and share <laughs> it with people. So that's, that's a nice thing and uh, it formats it for it. But you can also see the mentees who have contributed to mesh, Meshery, where else they're contributing. And that's really important because um, though they, the Meshery folks and Lee would love them to continue to work in there, you start to see how by being a mentee, they are also um, learning about other projects and connecting and contributing to other projects. And I think from a simple spreadsheet, you can't quite see not, that. Not, not quite. And, and, and I think this is the one that we have up on screen here. I do want to call attention to this bold line here. Mentees who have contributed to Meshery have contributed to, 30, to uh, over 33 other CNCF projects. And that type of impact is, is something that we don't get from many other programs um, to, to have uh, um, a, a, a group of people uh, be able to, to say, okay, look, we're, we're, we're not only working on Meshery, but we're also working on, uh, um, oh, my mind is running blank, 190, <laughs> 190 projects, I can't remember all of them, I'll, I'll command, but it, it's amazing how many other things folks are able to do when they're introduced to the ecosystem. Yeah. Um, and being able to track that and see that, and it, 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 it's, it's um, wild. <laughs> yeah, and so to, to be able to share this use case and track it for, and I know we'll talk a little bit about this when we get to the WordPress site too, is but so what they managed to do is grow some of these mentees into new employees for layer five, which is really fun for uh, CNCF and Linux Foundation member organization to see the benefit of participating. Retain them over time. You can see the trajectory, whether they, after the mentorship, they stayed in the project and continued to do that. Um, and then some of these folks um, went off to other organizations that then became members of the CNCF um, and actively participated in their new jobs. So there's like lots of benefits that you can tease out and see um, in some of these things. And it was, it was, it's very insightful. Um, and you know we, we see this pattern reoccurring with other organization member organizations. Um, there's a few of them, so we can see that and tease that out in the the, the diagrams and the network diagrams um, for projects and and there. So it's kind of um, the other pattern that we noticed when in this from the CNCF work we did was this other what I call virtuous cycle is that and Huawei was the example we were using and have been using is to showcase this, but it occurs repeatedly. Mentees who go on, they have a great experience, they see the benefit of the mentorship program, and we can surface them as they be, and recruit them to become mentors, and there, a number of them have done that. Um, and so we can see that Hong, Hong Kai Ren and Shimei Meta became connected in the mentorship program in the next evolution, or the next cycle, the next cohort. So um, there are also a number of other um, additional metrics that we can show and surface and track, um, whether they stayed participants in whatever they fo their focus project was, the other ones that were related, um, if they became employees, if they stayed, um, became employees at non-member organizations, which the Linux Foundation and CNCF like, because then they can go recruit new yeah. members, yes. Um, and a number of uh, uh, members, uh, mentees, are students. So it's also interesting to watch the student grow and evolve because I think the other projects you're with, the Google Summer of Code and the other programs, you can see them go to other mentorship programs back and forth too in this stuff. So it's really um, a very nice and easy and repeatable tool to use to track them. And all we basically had to do was take the list of folks that you'd accepted um, and we had We'll go talk about some other findings that we, we had knew yeah. after the first pass of this. But I want to hand the mic over to uh, our friend here, Ben just Evans. Do you want to? Sorry, just before we uh, continue, uh, I see that there is a question. Uh, we're going to we're trying trying to talk quick, and uh, we will have a Q and A section at the end of this. So um, uh, I see you, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll 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 do that at the back end. All right. Cool, thank you. So um, I'm going to introduce two examples from the WordPress project where we've also had mentorship programs already running, but we've introduced tooling to track the metrics um, and analyze the metrics. And so what I want to really like share with you today is having a mentorship program is great. Um, tracking, the, tracking the progress of your mentorship is great, but also like really analyzing that 
will show you different insights that you wouldn't have been able to see if you didn't have the data. Um, so just to give you, uh, just to sort of set the, set the stage here, I am a team representative for the training team in the WordPress project. And what the training team does is we create learning content, educational content for the WordPress project's official education website, learn.wordpress.org. So most of us are not developers. Uh, we are content creators, we are content translators, um, and so we create content um, to publish on this website. Um, and the WordPress training team has a very um, structured uh, contributor ladder, which is published in a handbook, and all our new training team members are introduced to this contributor ladder um, at the early stages of their contributions. Um, you don't have to read all the details, but I do want to highlight um, down the left side there, you'll see our stages of volunteering, um, starting from connecting to engaging to performing to leading. And then across the top, you'll see the five paths of contribution we've set out in the training team. If anybody here um, has produced content before, you'll know, you'll know that producing content isn't a one-man thing. There are a lot of different roles involved in that. And so in the training team, we've identified, we first have our content creators, yes. Uh, we also have our content translators. We have our editors to, who review content before it is published. We have our subject matter experts, our content creators refer to when they need um, assistance creating content. And then we also have administrators. Every team has administrative work that must be done. So we've opened as much of this administrative work up um, out to contributors to contribute to as well. So um, this graph shows, um, uh, and so the training team has been running a guided onboarding program um, for about seven or eight months now. Uh, we have a self-guided onboarding program, which we started at the beginning of last year, uh, but people were asking for, um, for a guided one-on-one -on -one onboarding session. So they still go through the, self, the same material as the um, self-serve onboarding material, but they have this mentor they can go to and ask questions um, whenever they have questions. Um, and the mentor just assures them um, and guides them, makes sure they do make that first contribution by the end of the onboarding program. And so this graph here shows, first of all, our mentors um, and the different projects they are connected to within the WordPress ecosystem. So the WordPress project um, has 150 GitHub repositories. So the circle nodes you see here are the guides, and the orange bars you'll see are the different repositories these guides have contributed to. Um, so you'll see we have like three predominant mentors there, and there are different clusters of projects they are contributing to. But um, since we've entered our data into Biturja, we've been able to find new insight which we haven't been able to see until now. And that is, amongst all these different repositories in the WordPress program, there are just three or four repositories that all our guides are contributing to outside the training team's direct repository. So all our guides, of course, contribute to the training team's repository, but there are three or four repositories that every guide has contributed to outside the training team's repository. And what is really interesting is when we make the same graph here, this time about our mentees, we are noticing that the first repositories our mentees contribute to outside the training team are the exact same repositories our mentors are also commonly um, contributing to. So um, we, we're still trying to understand what does this mean? Are our mentees just mirroring our mentors? Maybe there's something in the GitHub um, contribution um, structure of these repositories that is similar and easy for our, men, our mentees to contribute to. Um, but again, these, these are different insights we wouldn't have been able to see um, if we didn't have a tool like this. And I also want to point out um, a couple of our con uh, mentees. Um, they have definitely grown because of this guide program. Um, for example, Ronnie, you see on the left here, um, she started, started out as an editor, a content reviewer. Um, but she has since moved on to writing scripts for dev-focused content. And what's more exciting is that recently she has volunteered to become the wrangler and author of our Contributor Spotlight series. So every month the training team publishes a post putting a spotlight on one of our contributors. And Ronnie has, um, she's only been in the team a couple of months, but she's volunteered to take that project on. And she and another contributor are consistently every month publishing this post for us. Prem on the right here, he started out as a Hindi content translator. He then became a reviewer. 
He's a consistent meeting note taker for us. Um, and the last month, he also became a guide in the guide program. So we're seeing these people graduate from the program and come back and become guides for us. So that is one example of mentorship in the WordPress program. And I want to introduce one more different program we have. And that is a mentorship program which is across the entire WordPress program. So, um, we, so we actually call this the mentorship program and the training team has a guide program. So the WordPress mentorship program just finished its second cohort at the end of March um, this year. And we had 52 applicants interested in the program. Out of those, 44 made um, contributions to the WordPress um, ecosystem. And specifically, 10 of these made contributions to the recent WordPress 6.5 release. So if you own a WordPress self, um, site, uh, the first week of April, you would have got a notice saying upgrade to WordPress 6.5. 10 of these contributors contributed to that WordPress release. Um, 14 have committed to joining the WordPress 6.6 release later this year, um, and we've got a 88% satisfaction rate of the mentorship program as a whole. Um, this is some of the data we can really drill into within Biturja. We won't go into details here, um, but I will note that these 44 contributors together over a four-week program made 292 contributions to WordPress. Um, that is a really astounding number considering this is their first time making contributions. And I'll also note WordPress doesn't just use GitHub. We also use a system called Track to make um, code contributions. Um, and we haven't quite got track data into Biturja yet, so we don't have the numbers here, but um, their contributions are, are further than what we are seeing right now. So WordPress has an initiative we call Five for the Future. And this is where we um, encourage companies to contribute 5% of their resources back into WordPress. If you benefit from WordPress, we encourage you to contribute 5% of um, your resources back to make WordPress even better. So this could be 5% of your finances, it could be 5% of your uh, workforce, it could be 5% of your work, each worker's working hours each week. Um, how you calculate the 5% is up to you, but we encourage companies to make a pledge and commit to contributing back into WordPress. And um, something we've been able to find is when we look at all the contributions made to WordPress through GitHub, the majority of our contributions are coming from these companies who have made uh, some sort of pledge to the project. Um, so the brown slot highlighted on the slide, that that is uh, self-sponsored contributors. So these are the people who uh, finance their own contributions. And basically the rest of the entire circle are people who are hired by a company to spend some of their time contributing back to the project. What's been interesting is that the self-reported time people, um, the, the time people self-report contributing to the project um, doesn't, line up um, equally with the data we find, say, in GitHub pull requests or issue contributions. Um, and this is to ex be expected because not all our contributions are picked up in GitHub or Track. Um, there are contributions outside of just code, for example, running events, um, sponsoring other people to contribute to the program. Um, but until now, we haven't really been able to compare the, um, the, what people are saying they're pledging and what their actual contributions are. So with tools um, like this, we've been able to see the data and compare the two. What are people actually pledging? What are they actually contributing? Um, and so this helps project management, first of all, understand where companies are spending their resources within the project. Um, and it can help the project advocate for different needs we have or rationalize decisions when we have to pivot from one project to another. Um, tracking and analyzing contributions like this helps the project consider a few things. For example, um, where are contributions happening or not happening? Um, what contributions are potentially being overlooked and not recognized um, because they don't come up in the dashboards? Um, how have contribution, contribution trends changed over time? Um, and what conversations can a project have with these companies who have made a pledge to make sure that the, con the company strengths um, are directed into effective parts of the project. Um, so we, the WordPress project has only really started um, pulling in data into these dashboards in the last few months, and we're looking forward to really diving in and having these conversations with our contributors. 
So a couple of next steps we've listed here. Um, the training team specifically, uh, we want to develop dashboards that track uh, contributors' progression throughout through the contribution ladder. So at the moment, it's <laughs> so at the moment, it's a very manual process where we sort of track different people across different platforms and see their contributions. Um, but we want to create dashboards that this is a bit automated, um, which makes it easier for us to follow up with mentees and their guides um, to help them be more successful. Um, we want to investigate the contribution commonalities between our mentors and our mentees. And we want to share our successes in the training team with the other teams, even within the WordPress project and outside the WordPress ecosystem. All right, and there are more next steps. <laughs> um, and thank you for my timer there, so that would keep us on yeah. there. And, and we're going to just walk through a, a few of them, and then we're going to open it up for questions here. And so really, the key here is now, we can, now that we have the data sets and we have the methodology, for creating these cohorts and tracking them, and we can use them in different different ways and expanding the scope to other projects. And when we talk about expanding the scope, it gets pretty crazy out there sometimes. So, um, so some of the, the quick lessons that we learned, especially on the CNCF side um, too, is um, really that we, we, we're going to grow this thing. We're going to use these, these patterns and these, these practices to grow them into the other pro projects. Um, and really, it allows us to celebrate, celebrate and grow even more mentors um, and recognize their efforts and, and let their organizations know how successful they've been. So it's really a key to engagement for people like Nate and for people like Ben and other folks who are using this approach um, and this methodology. Um, as we said, it's probably it's it's now six more, or is that up to the six? No, this is this is up this, to date. Now. This, so is this is up to date now. The last last time we ran this was it was it was fifty five of um, what was it, one hundred and seventy? Oh, yeah, hundred. We're growing, we're, I yeah, think we yeah. hit hundred uh, hundred and seventy something, seventy something, seven something or something like that. Like so that. The, the actual percentage has gone down a little bit. Um, so we're, we're we're working on trying to get more uh, projects involved. Yeah. So, you know, it really, um, the advantage to the folks who are in the CNCF projects or in the sub-projects under WordPress is really getting increasing contributions, getting a piece of work done, recruiting new com com contributors, because then when you can look at the network and there, you can start to identify people who might be interested and tease those out too in the dashboards is quite nice. And also for them, it's an opportunity to increase project visibility. So in, in your world, um, there are lots of repos, and we have not pulled into the dashboard yet. So. Yeah, we've been just talking about the core WordPress code here, but actually we have like over 50,000 plugins and what is it, 12,000 themes. Um, and WordPress also uses PHP, and we contribute to these other code stacks as well. So what would be really cool is if we could pull in the data from the entire ecosystem and see where contribution is happening and where more contribution might be needed too. Yeah, because I think the interesting thing was we were having a conversation the other day and um, was it Angela or Josepha said that, oh, well, automatic um, sponsors one person to work on MariaDB. And my reply was, well, I'm sure there are other people from your community working over there. So if we pull in the MariaDB paper, we can tease out possibly potential other mentees um, and definitely other mentors um, to help with that. So um, this is really, you know, this conversation that we're having with each other and with lots of mentorship programs is really about, um, you know, why, why should you measure? Why should you track? Um, it's really about um, giving you an easy way to get visibility of how people are participating, where they are, whether they've actually made a contribution, that have they created their GitHub profile or those things. Um, but also allowing um, people like both Ben and Nate to really talk to their member organizations about why they should participate in these projects. And I think that's really um, uh, one of the key pieces, but also tracking whether we're retaining those mentees in um, our projects and in our ecosystem. And if they disappear, and that happens sometimes, mm -hmm. um, we had one and um, that we could never find again um, after the menteeship. And that was a really odd one, but then that's, that happens and people are allowed to go off and become accountants Mm -hmm. You know, what the heck? And, um, you know, and then potentially create employees. And then by showing the benefits to the member organizations, then you get them to endow the, member, the mentorship programs. You get them to allow their employees to be mentors um, and get a piece of work done. Um, and it also, there's good reasons for. Yeah, and so why, why would you want to be a mentor? Um, not only does your, 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 your 
project or that piece of work done, you get to show potentially your. I think I think that everybody who is a mentor should put their mentorship into their into their promo pack. It's a really good way of showing your 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 supervisor, your boss, that here's how I think about projects. Here's how uh, here's an issue that I found. Uh, let me write it up such that somebody can apply against it. Uh, go through and find somebody. That's your. Uh, if somebody potentially is a mentor, maybe they haven't ever hired anybody and have gone through that process yet. Um, you can then see, okay, well, I'm coaching this person. We're doing it in the open. Uh, so again, you can show your boss, hey, this is how I've uh, resolved issues, or not issues, that's, we're overloading that term, but uh, here's how I'm coaching people, or here's how I'm re responding to those PRs to help coach people to get work done. And then, of course, at the end of the day, you've got a piece of work done that you can say, hey, this is something that I worked on with this person. And you get, uh, if, if you're able to take that and put it in your promo packet and show it to your boss, it's, it's, it's a really nice um, cycle of, of, of um, I think that it's just some of the reasons that not only that, you're also uh, expanding your uh, network into uh, and, and, and getting the satisfaction of helping somebody start their career. So uh, now for time, I'm going to. <laughs> We're going to say, uh, say thank you and um, ask if there are any questions for either of these folks or myself. Yeah. Um, I think there was one. There was one question in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the, the question is about the profile of the mentees in the CNCF programs. Uh, we aim for, um, what, what I tell my project maintainers is I ask them, do you have any work that you think a second or, no, I'm sorry, like a third or a fourth year engineering student uh, or a junior developer could do over the course of about 12 weeks with some coaching? Um, so, uh, but we aren't, we aren't strict on that. Uh, if uh, someone is looking to change careers and is new to open source, they're welcome to join as well. Um, and so we don't have a particular profile, but it, it does tend to, we don't have a particular profile that we're looking for, but it does tend to fall into the, to the, to the um, university crowd. So it's, it's, it's folks who are uh, looking to do, and, and we run our um, terms uh, correlating to the, to the Northern uh, spring, summer, fall, uh, so that we can catch some of the uh, the co-op terms. I want to add, that's not necessarily the case in the WordPress side. Um, I think we've had people who are not university grads, maybe they're part of a company who has made a pledge, and so the company says, go and contribute, and then they come to us and say, how, where do I start, how do I get involved? Um, so yes, we've seen some uni students, but I think that's an area WordPress can actually do a bit more outreach into um, to get more of those uni students in. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of our mentees so far have been a bit more beyond that stage, but it's their first time in WordPress. Cool. Any other questions? Comments? All right, then. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make a blatant pitch for the next talk um, that I'm in. Um, and some more Batergian um, uh, folks are, are talking, and Shishwan Fen will be there, uh, he's here, and we're, that's at 2 o'clock, right? Um, and we're going to be talking about um, using some of these toolings to address some of the diversity challenges. And if you have a moment, because you're not asking questions, you can always scan that QR code and help a PhD student with his... Um, his survey uh, for his next piece of work. So if you could take a moment and do that and share it with your friends, we'd really appreciate that. And um, with that, <laughs> there you go. Um, if, if you're a mentor, this is a great way to help give back um, to, the, to the, um, the research that they're doing over at Oregon State University. And um, with that, I will release you to your lunch. <laughs> and um, thank you for your um, avoiding hunger and staying with us as you did. So thanks very much. Thanks for coming out, everyone. All right.